Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 9, Lesson 4, Juan Ponce de Leon. We're going to start by going over the key vocabulary words you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is colonization, the process of taking control of an area and sending people to the newly controlled land to develop a settlement there. Our next word is expedition, a journey taken for a specific purpose by a large group of people. Then we have the word intriguing, extremely interesting. Then we have the word mistreatment, poor treatment that is harmful or abuse. Then we have the word rebellion, an open and often violent attempt by a group of people to overthrow a government or person in power. We are now going to move into today's reading. In early 1493, Juan Ponce de Leon was uncertain about his future. Trained as a knight, he had spent a few years fighting against the Moors in southern Spain. The Moors crossed from Africa to Europe and took over most of the Iberian Peninsula, the land where Portugal and Spain are. This caused a great clash between Christianity and Islam. After Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand of Spain successfully drove the Moors out of Spain in 1492 with their army to preserve Christianity, Ponce de Leon was not sure what he should do next. That all changed in the spring of 1493 when Christopher Columbus returned to Europe after his first transatlantic voyage. Word swept across Spain that Columbus had discovered new islands, possibly islands in Asia, and that these islands were filled with gold and spices. As you have heard, Columbus wanted to claim more territories in honor of Spain, so he organized another expedition to the New World. Thousands of men had come from all over Spain to sign up for Columbus's second voyage, and Juan Ponce de Leon was one of them. Ponce de Leon set sail with Columbus in September of 1493. He was with Columbus, and when the explorer returned to the fort, on Hispaniola and found they had been destroyed. Ponce de Leon participated in the conquest of Hispaniola and eventually settled on the island. In 1504, there was, a, there was a rebellion on the eastern side of Hispaniola. The Taino, angered by the years of mistreatment by the Spaniards, rose up and fought for their freedom. Ponce de Leon played an important part in stopping the rebellion and as a reward was given a piece of land on Hispaniola. Appointed as the governor of the island and assigned a number of slave laborers to help him cultivate a plantation. Sweet potatoes and a new world crop called cassave grew on the plantation and pigs, cows, and horses were raised there as well. Ponce de Leon married a Spanish woman and brought her to live with him on Hispaniola. By 1506, Ponce de Leon had established himself as a notable person on the island of Hispaniola. He might have stayed there for the rest of his life, enjoying the life of a wealthy plantation owner, but he had an adventurous streak. About this time, Ponce de Leon began, began to hear stories about another island east of Hispaniola, an island that we now call Puerto Rico. He had heard intriguing stories about gold on the island, and he decided to explore it. Ponce de Leon led an expedition to Puerto Rico in 1506. He brought with him a cousin who had learned the native language and could serve as a translator. Ponce de Leon, with the natives of the island, met with the natives of the island and made a treaty with one of their chiefs who allowed him and other Spaniards to hike across the island. To their great delight, they found several large nuggets of gold in the rivers and streams. They also found an excellent, well-sheltered harbor, which is now known as San Juan Bay. Ponce de Leon went back to Puerto Rico a second time in 1508. Once again, he struck a deal with one of the native tribal leaders who supplied him with workers. These men built a settlement near San Juan Bay and cleared land for plantation while the Spaniards reached, searched for gold. In 1509, Ponce de Leon was made governor of Puerto Rico. He encouraged Spanish settlement on the island and searched for more gold. In 1511, the Taino people of Puerto Rico began a rebellion. Ponce de Leon and the Spanish crushed the rebellion using swords, guns, horses, and attack dogs. Juan Ponce de Leon seemed poised for success in Puerto Rico for many years to come, but political problems arose. Diego Columbus, the son of Christopher Columbus, had gotten himself appointed viceroy in charge of Hispaniola. He didn't like Juan Ponce de Leon, so Columbus had Ponce de Leon removed from office. Ponce de Leon decided to explore new lands, lands that would lie outside of the territory governed by his enemy, Diego Columbus. In 1512, Ponce de Leon received King Ferdinand's permission to look for a place that the native people called Bimini. 
What do you think Juan Ponce de Leon was hoping to find in Bimini? If you thought he was looking for gold, that's a good idea. It shows that you've been listening closely. The Spanish were usually looking for gold on their explorations, and Juan Ponce de Leon was no exception. However, tradition has it that Ponce de Leon may have been looking for something else as well. Some historians wrote stories after Ponce de Leon's death, saying that he was searching for a magical fountain called the Fountain of Youth on the island of Bimini. According to legend, an old man who bathed in the water of this fountain would regain his youth. Some historians say that this story may have intrigued Ponce de Leon and that he set out to find the Fountain of Youth. In March of 1513, Juan Ponce de Leon set sail from Puerto Rico. On April 3rd, he and his crew he and his crew sighted land. Ponce de Leon thought it was an island, but in fact it was a peninsula, a piece of land that sticks out into the ocean and is surrounded by ocean on three sides. Juan Ponce de Leon and his men went ashore and claimed the land in the name of King Ferdinand. It was the spring season, which the Spanish called Pascua Florida, or the season of flowers. The land itself was full of flowers, so Ponce de Leon named this land La Florida, or the flowery place. The name stuck, and to this day, the land is called Florida. Only a few documents from this, from this voyage have survived. Some historians are not sure about all of the details of his travels. Ponce de Leon sailed north along the east coast of Florida, and after some time, he turned south. About halfway down the eastern coast of Florida, Ponce de Leon and his captains made an interesting discovery. They discovered that, even though the wind was blowing briskly and should have been pushing their ships southward, the ships were actually moving north. Can any of you guess why the ships were moving backward, even though the wind was pushing them forward? Ponce de Leon and his men were sailing against a strong ocean current. In fact, they had discovered one of the strongest and most important currents in the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream is like a river with the Atlantic Ocean. It is a current of warm water that flows out of the Gulf of Mexico around Florida along the southeastern coast of the United States and then northeast, all the way to northern Europe. Later, explorers learned that a good way to get back to Europe quickly was to sail into the Gulf Stream and then ride the current back to Europe. Ponce de Leon and his men found that they could avoid the Gulf Stream by staying very close to shore. A few days after they discovered the Gulf Stream, Ponce de Leon and his men tried to go ashore on the peninsula, but they were attacked by native people and driven back to their ships. Ponce de Leon decided to continue exploring to the Florida coastline. He sailed south and rounded the tip of Florida. He still thought he had discovered an island and he was trying to sail around it. He sailed along the string of islands known today as the Florida Keys into the Gulf of Mexico. Then he turned north and explored the western coast of Florida. He anchored for a while along the coast, probably around the area now known as Charlotte Harbor, but Ponce de Leon and his men were attacked several times, so they didn't stay too long. Eventually, Ponce de Leon decided to return to Puerto Rico and report on the lands he had discovered. On the way back, he had his men, he and his men visited islands off the coast of Florida that were home to thousands of sea turtles. Ponce de Leon named these lands Tortugas, the Spanish word for turtles. Ponce de Leon went back to Spain to tell the king about his discoveries. He was not able to return to Florida for several years. In 1521, he launched a second expedition focused on colonization. Ponce de Leon wanted to establish a Spanish colony in Florida. He loaded his ships with more than 200 men, including farmers and priests. He also brought horses, sheep, pigs, and goats. Ponce de Leon and his men landed somewhere along the southwestern coast of Florida. We don't know where exactly. They began setting up a colony, but after a few weeks, they were driven away by the Calusa Indians, Native Americans of the region. Ponce de Leon was wounded in an attack when an arrow struck him in the thigh. The Spaniards gave up on their Florida settlement and retreated to Cuba. While in Cuba, Ponce de Leon's wound became infected. He died in July of 1521. Some years later, his remains were transferred to San Juan, Puerto Rico, the city he had founded many years earlier. You may now move on to Unit 9, Lesson 4, Google Form.